the argument that she used for it was, well, they're going to do it anyway, so we need to give them the safe version. And again, I just showed you why that's an incredibly stupid thing to suggest, especially with pornography. But I mean, think about it with anything else. It would be like, well, we'll use drugs since we already talked about that one a little bit. We don't really want kids to smoke marijuana or cocaine or heroin, so let's just give them all cigarettes at like age 12. Hey fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for tonight's Daily Dose of Stupid, this one is a weird one and fair warning, fairly creepy. So it comes from this woman named Flora Gill, who is a British writer for GQ, Style, The Sunday Times, and a radio host over there for, uh, I believe it's Times Radio. And she made an incredibly disgusting and dumb suggestion the other day via Twitter, where most disgusting and dumb suggestions come from. It is, is their typical origin point. So we're going to go ahead and read that. And fair warning, this one is a little creepy. So uh, if you got little kids watching, maybe don't have them watch this segment. But here it is from Gloria, or sorry, Flora Gill. Someone needs to create porn for children. Hear me out. Usually if you have to say hear me out, it means that whatever you're about to say is really dumb. But okay, continue. <clears throat> Young teens are already watching porn, but they're finding hardcore aggressive videos that give a terrible view of sex and they need entry-level porn, a, so a soft core site where everyone asks for consent and no one gets choked, etc. How do you even respond to that? Like, somebody that thinks that little kids, young, young kids, teens, should be watching porn, they just need to be watching the right porn, and they think that the problem with current porn is not that it's pornography, that it's degrading, any of that stuff. They think the problem is just the way and tone of the porn. If, if people were just asking for consent and nobody was getting choked, that porn would be perfectly acceptable. No, it wouldn't. It's bad. All of it. Period. Full stop. There needs no more description of that. It's all bad. Because it takes the most intimate act that a person can engage in with another human being and makes it into a spectacle. Therefore, it is bad no matter how it is presented. Even if everybody's super polite, even if everybody's nice, even if everybody consents, it's still evil. And there's really no way around that. You can't, I mean, is there some that's worse than others? Maybe, but it's all bad. And so th this idea that we should be having kids just watch the correct porn or porn that is entry level to them, there are several reasons why this is stupid. Of course, there's the, the moral ridiculousness of it. But the first thing that comes to mind when you're looking at something this dumb is that it's illegal. Now, I don't really claim to be an expert on laws in the UK, but I would assume it's the same over there. I hope that it is. But in the United States, showing pornography to a kid or marketing pornography to a kid, just like if you were to, there's a reason that it's illegal to market cigarettes to children. Uh, even if you're a legitimate cigarette company, and even though cigarettes are legal in this country, you can't market cigarettes to kids. And the reason for that is because you're specifically trying to subvert and go around the law and hope that they're going to break the law and purchase your product. In the same way, you cannot market porn to children. This is a crime. In fact, I actually can't give the details because I want to protect names of, of people, and I'm sure once you hear this story, you'll understand that. But I was close with somebody who fostered a child because their parent had them watch them engage in a sex act. Didn't, you know, have them do anything sexually or, or didn't do anything to them or touch them or any, anything like that, but they engaged in a sex act intention intentionally in front of the child. 
this is a crime, and showing them pornography is exactly the same thing. That is a crime. Not only is it contributing to the delinquency of a minor, but it is sexual assault. By the way, it still counts as uh, sexual harassment, even if this is a person that is over the age of 18. For example, uh, not only would it be a terrible idea for my career, but if I were to just walk around my workplace and show a random adult a piece of porn, even if it was just 10 seconds, that's sexual harassment unless they ask for it or they're okay with it. I thought this was something that we all understood, and since somebody that is under 18 legally is not capable of giving consent, that's what it means to be a minor when it comes to sex, you, you lack the ability to consent, therefore any sex perpetrated against you is statutory rape, if you can't give consent, then it is impossible for you to show pornography to a kid and it not be sexual harassment, even if they want it, even if they like it. That's what that means. And so just the first level of stupid is, well, you're, you just recommended that people break the law in several different ways. <laughs> so that's the first one. The second, uh, porn is escalatory by nature. It's a gateway. Very few people start out with the kind of hardcore pornography that she kind of alludes to in that tweet. The stuff where, you know, one person's choking the other, or there's some kind of bondage or abuse or something in that. It's very rare that people start out at that level. Almost everyone actually does watch what she would refer to as entry-level porn first. They, they've, had, they've done studies on this over and over again. We had Dr. Lou Butterfield who came down to talk to us about this. He was a guest on the show. You may remember that segment from, I, I want to say, back last year sometime. Um, he actually came in and talked to us about this. There's no such thing as safe porn because it's all a gateway. You can watch the, the porn where everybody's nice and consenting and everything to start out with, but the thing is, your body, after you have trained your brain to release the chemicals that it desires, after acting out to pornography, it's going to need something more extreme the next time. It's kind of like, uh, I believe cocaine is the one that's like this. It's like cocaine. You, you start out and your first trip on cocaine is amazing, and everyone after that isn't as good, and so they're constantly trying to increase the dosage, constantly trying to do things to make the next trip as good as the last one, but it has a that you, you sort of build up a little bit of a natural immunity to it so the next trip isn't as good as the one before, and so you're constantly chasing a high. And that's exactly the way that porn is. After a while, you will become enable because you need st stuff that is so extreme to be able to get your fulfillment. And I know that this is an uncomfortable circumstance, but it, it proves the point that I'm making here. Uh, there are was even a person that the professor that, that came in and spoke to us about this. He talked about this specifically. He said that there was one client that he had that was so addicted to porn that he could not do stuff with his wife unless he was watching porn during the process because he had so desensitized himself to that he couldn't be stimulated. Again, I know this is a very uncomfortable topic, but I, I have to sort of soldier through this to get to my point. That is exactly what is going to happen to kids. And if you're starting out kids on this at a very young age, then that just means that they're going to continue to look for more extreme and more extreme and more extreme porn the, the older that they get in order to try to chase that high just like they were originally. This thing is addictive like a drug. In fact, we, we were just talking to the, the doctor that was talking to us about this that actually came with brain scans showing that the scan of somebody that is addicted to pornography is similar to the brain scan of somebody that is addicted to other extremely addictive and, and high-risk drugs, cocaine being the one that was the closest associated with it. And so this thing rewires your brain to think in a certain way that you will constantly do that. And so starting kids on this very, very young is a horrible idea because that gives them more time to build up that resistance and to continue to seek more extreme porn. So Let's just ignore the fact that I'm a minister of the gospel, think that all porn is wrong and immoral. Uh, let's, let's ignore that for a second and pretend that that is not the case. 
it would still be a bad idea because of what she's talking about there, the the really bad porn, the extreme porn that includes includes people being choked and that kind of thing. What the end result of that is going to be if you started marketing pornography to kids and started making it for kids is that more of that extreme porn is going to be produced because they get started younger and younger, and then they need the more extreme version as they grow and mature. That's what is going to happen. And so even if you didn't accept the premise that all pornography was automatically bad, like I do, even if you ignored that, this is only going to make the problem that she's talking about significantly worse. So even from her own perspective, it's an incredibly stupid suggestion. But I am noticing, it's real interesting here, this is a woman that just called for people to break laws that are supposed to protect children from being exposed to objectionable material like pornography, and the argument that she used for it was, well, they're going to do it anyway, so we need to give them the safe version. And again, I just showed you why that's an incredibly stupid thing to suggest, especially with pornography. But I mean, think about it with anything else. It would be like, well, we'll use drugs since we already talked about that one a little bit. We don't really want kids to smoke marijuana or cocaine or heroin, so let's just give them all cigarettes at like age 12. Because, I mean, they're going to do drugs and experiment with them anyway, so we might as well just give them the stuff. By the way, you may also notice that this exact same argument in another sexual realm happened a long time ago. Well, we know kids are going to be having sex anyway, and we need to quit teaching all of this abstinence stuff. We need to just give them condoms and tell them to have safe sex as opposed to just uh, telling them to abstain from sex until they're married. What happened with that? Well, here we are about 50, 60 years after that idea was originally introduced. The rate of STDs has skyrocketed. The rate of children born out of wedlock is extremely high in certain communities, especially the black community, sadly. I mean, they've completely destroyed the nuclear family in most of the black community, and that is a real travesty. But it's happened in other communities as well. And we're seeing extremely high rates of parents not born and, and not growing up in two-parent households as a result of that idea. You cannot play with this stuff. It's like fire. You have to be extremely careful with it. And when you do bring it out, you have to be careful in the way that you use it. it I mean, sexuality can be a, a wonderful, comforting thing, but it can be very easily perverted. And because of that, you have to be extremely careful with how you use it and in what way it's going to be brought out, because if it's not coupled with responsibility, and that's been the left's crusade over the past several decades to try to decouple sex from responsibility, and we've seen the results that it's had, unless it's coupled with responsibility, it's a lot like fire. It can be very comforting and useful in certain circumstances and contexts, but it can also burn stuff down. And that's exactly what we've seen happen. This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do, for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.